Good evening, Crossroads. It's time for nighttime prayer. And uh, as always, at 10 o'clock, we get together and we pray out the day and pray in the night. It seems like uh, there are so many discussions about uh, what's important these days. You've heard this term, essentials. You know, only essential businesses, only essential uh, use of time, only essential travel. And it dawned on me that that word essential is interpreted. So at this point, what's essential is kind of your guess. I'm wearing what I would consider to be my essential wardrobe, my oldest favorite hat, which I wear so much that it's ratty. And my wife says, Doug, why do you keep on wearing it? And it's just because it fits. I consider it essential. If I get up, this is the hat I go to. I'm wearing a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey because as a hockey player, this is essential for me. I have a couple of them. I have a lot of hockey jerseys, but actually if I have to pick one, this is the one. It's essential to me. I wonder if uh, that word gets misconstrued sometimes. You know, like if you're a high school student, what's essential? Oh, prom's essential. Um, you know, is, is having a date on Friday night essential? Is getting my homework in essential? And a lot of times we misinterpret words to mean what I think is important. See, essential means survival. Essential to me means preference. Uh, there was uh, an author, his name was Erwin Lutzer, and um, still around, and he wrote uh, something that has impacted my life. He's, he talked about the difference between what is essential and what is convenience. So, so, as I was thinking about that, I realized that certain essential businesses don't seem to be essential. Uh, a couple days ago, I read that Florida considers the WWE an essential business. And it might be, and for the people who work in that industry, it's essential to keep working. Maybe the distraction of entertainment is considered essential. When I think about essential and I think about survival and I think about this day and age that we live in, I realize that certain things that other people consider essential aren't all that important to me. And so it had me thinking this question to you or to me, what is really essential? From God's perspective, what's, what's the most important thing? I've said over and over again, we're learning, we're learning how to operate in what's coming. And we're going to have to learn what's essential. In that way, we're trying to step into the new. We're, we're trying to figure out what is God trying to teach us? What do we have to learn through all of this? Let me, let me read what I think God is saying. This was Paul talking to a church in Corinth, which is interesting because it seems that in this day and age, we don't consider church to be essential but we consider other variances of entertainment to be essential. Paul says this to the Corinthian church, for I delivered to you as of first importance. What he's saying there is, for I delivered to you what's essential. Here's what it is. What I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. That seems to be a recurring theme here. And that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles. Last of all, as one untimely birth, he appeared to me also. For I'm the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that's within me. And this is the deal that I want you to get, that what Paul said was essential is the fact that Christ died, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. How do I live that out? Oh, well, here it is. I have an example that whatever I'm going through is temporary. 
In Philippians, it says that I am not a citizen here, but I'm a citizen in heaven. And when my citizenship is in order, when I understand where I'm from, the things that are essential are way different. That I would be like Jesus, that I would live like Jesus, that I would live in the hope of Jesus, because he was dead, he was buried, and he was raised again three days later, and that is essential. It's my hope, it's my message, it's everything I want. Tonight I've asked Ben if he'll pray and Ben is forfeiting his senior year. The end of his senior year is coming to a close and he's not gonna do classes and, and we don't know if he's gonna walk in some kind of graduation ceremony. What we do know is that Ben knows what the, what the essentials are. Ben, let's pray. Hi, my name is Ben Affelter. I'm a senior from Reading High School. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this challenge that you've put in our life with Corona. Um, I pray that it reminds us that you are our, our essential. Um, not our girlfriends, not our boyfriends, not our sports, not our schools or friends, but that you are the essential to our lives. You are the reason we walk this earth, and you're the reason we live every day. I pray that we can continue to live for you in everything that we do, and that each moment we... We, we get, we choose you, not this world, but we choose you. I pray for safety in this time and that your glory and your power may be shown through this challenge and these obstacles. I pray for the safety of everybody and I pray that um, they can feel your love today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.